In patients with autoimmune diseases, stress dose steroids are often administered during periods of physiological stress, such as surgery, infection, trauma, or other significant events to prevent adrenal insufficiency. This practice is based on the idea that long-term steroid use can suppress the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal HPA axis, reducing the body's ability to produce endogenous cortisol during stress. Here's a general approach to stress dose steroids in these patients. One, low risk patients. Patients on low dose steroids, five milligrams per day of prednisone or equivalent, or those on short courses of steroids, three weeks, usually do not need additional stress dose steroids. Two, moderate risk. Patients on long-term steroid therapy, more than five milligrams per day for over three weeks, may require an increase in their steroid dose during stressful situations. Three, surgical or severe stress, minor stress, e.g. minor procedures, mild infections. Patients may require a doubling of their usual glucocorticoid dose. Moderate stress, e.g. major surgery. Prednisone equivalent of 25 to 50 milligrams per day is typically recommended during the stress period. Major stress, e.g. sepsis, trauma. Hydrocortisone 100 milligrams IV every eight hours may be given initially with tapering as the situation stabilizes. For tapering, once the stress has passed, it is important to taper the stress dose steroids back to the patient's baseline maintenance dose to avoid adrenal suppression. Close monitoring of the patient's clinical status is crucial, adjusting the steroid dose as necessary to prevent both undertreatment, leading to adrenal crisis, and overtreatment, leading to hypercortilism. Always consult specific guidelines or a specialist for tailored advice as individual patient needs can vary significantly. The stress dose steroids typically are not dosed strictly according to age, weight, or sex, but rather based on the severity of the stress and the individual's prior steroid exposure. However, there are general guidelines for dosing and adjustments may be made for pediatric patients or individuals with specific conditions. General guidelines for stress dose steroids. One, adults, general guidelines, minor stress, eat mild illness or minor surgery, continue the usual steroid dose or give double the daily dose for one to two days. Moderate stress, e.g. moderate surgery, pneumonia, hydrocortisone 50 to 75 milligrams per day IV or prednisone equivalent for one to two days. Major stress, e.g. major surgery, trauma, sepsis, hydrocortisone 100 mg IV followed by 50 to 100 mg IV every six to eight hours or prednisone equivalent, typically tapered after one to two days based on the clinical response. Two, pediatric patients. Pediatric patients often require stress doses based on body weight. The dose of hydrocortisone is typically calculated as one two mg kg IV every six to eight hours, depending on the severity of the stress. Moderate stress. Hydrocortisone 50 mg mg per day IV or equivalent. Major stress, hydrocortisone 100 mg mg per day IV, divided into doses every six to eight hours. Three, considerations for age, weight, and sex, weight-based adjustments. For significantly underweight or overweight individuals, dose adjustments can be made using body surface area, BSA, or body weight. Elderly patients. Elderly patients may require closer monitoring for side effects, such as hyperglycemia, hypertension, and delirium, though they typically follow the same general dosing guidelines. Sex differences. There are no specific adjustments based solely on sex, though females may need more monitoring if pregnant or breastfeeding, as their cortisol metabolism may be altered. Example doses. Hydrocortisone, IV, common for stress dosing. Adults, 50 to 100 mg IV every 6 to 8 hours, major stress. Children, 1 to 2 mg per kg IV every 6 to 8 hours. Prednisone, oral, sometimes used in moderate stress. Adults, 20 to 50 mg per day, depending on severity. Children, dosing depends on weight, about 0.3 to 1 mg per kg per day. It is essential to tailor the dosing based on the clinical situation with close monitoring of the patient's response to therapy. When administering stress dose steroids in patients with autoimmune diseases, several precautions, side effects, and complications must be considered due to both the short-term and long-term effects of corticosteroid therapy. Precautions. One, existing comorbidities, diabetes, 
corticosteroids can cause hyperglycemia. Diabetic patients may need adjustments in insulin or oral hypoglycemic agents. Hypertension. Steroids can increase blood pressure. Careful monitoring is necessary, especially in hypertensive patients. Infections. Steroids suppress the immune response, increasing the risk of infections or worsening existing ones. Monitor closely for signs of infection. Peptic ulcer disease. Steroids can increase the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding or ulcer formation, especially when combined with NSAIDs. Consider gastroprotection, e.g. PPIs, in at-risk patients. Osteoporosis. Long-term steroid use is associated with bone loss. Although stress dosing is usually short-term, it's still a concern in patients with pre-existing osteoporosis. Psychiatric disorders. Steroids can cause mood swings, anxiety, or even steroid-induced psychosis in some individuals, particularly at high doses. Two, tapering. When the stressful event has passed, it is critical to taper the steroids gradually, especially in patients on long-term therapy, to avoid adrenal insufficiency. Abrupt cessation can precipitate an adrenal crisis. Three, electrolyte imbalance. Corticosteroids can cause sodium retention and potassium loss. Monitor for hypokalemia and consider potassium supplementation if needed. Four, drug interactions. Be cautious of interactions with other medications, such as NSAIDs, increased GI bleeding risk, anticoagulants, altered INR levels, and insulin may need dose adjustment. Side effects. One, metabolic, hyperglycemia. Steroids increase glucose production and reduce glucose uptake, leading to elevated blood sugar levels. Weight gain and fluid retention, common with corticosteroids due to sodium retention and changes in fat distribution. Hypokalemia, due to potassium loss, especially with hydrocortisone. Two, cardiovascular, hypertension. Steroids cause sodium retention, leading to increased blood pressure, edema, particularly in patients with heart or renal issues. Three, Gastrointestinal, gastric ulcers. Steroids increase the risk of peptic ulcers and GI bleeding. Indigestion and nausea, common, particularly with higher doses. Four, musculoskeletal, muscle weakness. Long-term use can cause muscle wasting and weakness, steroid myopathy. Bone loss, osteoporosis. Prolonged use can lead to bone demineralization, fractures, and a vascular necrosis. Five, psychiatric mood changes. Anxiety, depression, or euphoria can occur. Steroid-induced psychosis. In rare cases, high doses can cause hallucinations, delirium, or psychosis. Six, immune system. Immunosuppression, increased risk of infections, including opportunistic infections, e.g. fungal viral. Delayed wound healing. Steroids impair the healing process by suppressing inflammation and immune responses. Complications. One, adrenal suppression. Long-term or high-dose steroid therapy can suppress the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal, HPA, axis, leading to adrenal insufficiency. Patients on chronic steroids or frequent stress dosing may have reduced cortisol production, requiring lifelong steroid replacement or careful tapering. Two, adrenal crisis. If steroids are tapered too quickly or not administered in response to a major stressor, patients can experience adrenal crisis, which can be life-threatening. Symptoms include severe fatigue, hypotension, nausea, vomiting, and shock. Three, Cushingoid features. Prolonged high-dose steroid use can lead to features of Cushing syndrome, such as moon face, central obesity, buffalo hump, fat pad on the back of the neck, skin thinning and bruising. Four, cardiovascular complications. Prolonged use can increase the risk of atherosclerosis, myocardial infarction, and other cardiovascular diseases due to metabolic effects, increased blood sugar, dyslipidemia. Five, osteonecrosis, a vascular necrosis, high dose or chronic corticosteroid therapy can compromise blood supply to bones, particularly the femoral head, leading to necrosis and severe joint pain. Six ocular complications, long-term use can lead to cataracts and glaucoma. Monitoring, blood glucose levels, especially in diabetic or pre-diabetic patients. Blood pressure, monitor for new or worsening hypertension. Electrolytes, watch for hypokalemia and hypernatremia. Infection signs, regularly assess for symptoms of infection. Bone density, consider baseline and follow-up bone densitometry in patients on long-term steroids. Psychiatric symptoms, monitor for mood swings, anxiety, or psychosis. Careful consideration of these risks and benefits is essential when using stress-dose steroids, 
particularly in individuals with autoimmune diseases, to ensure safe and effective management of their condition. The use of stress dose steroids in patients with autoimmune diseases must be carefully evaluated with respect to the risk benefit ratio and potential alternatives. The decision to administer stress dose steroids typically depends on the patient's prior steroid exposure, the presence of adrenal suppression, and the severity of the physiological stress they are experiencing. Risk benefit ratio of stress dose steroids. Benefits 1. Prevention of adrenal crisis. In patients with adrenal insufficiency or those on long-term steroid therapy, stress dose steroids are life-saving. The body may not be able to produce adequate cortisol during stress, leading to an adrenal crisis, which can result in shock, severe hypotension, and even death. 2. Anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive effects. During periods of physiological stress, autoimmune diseases may flare. Stress dose steroids help control inflammation and immune dysregulation, reducing the risk of severe disease flares, e.g. in lupus rheumatoid arthritis. 3. Maintenance of hemodynamic stability. Cortisol plays a key role in maintaining vascular tone and blood pressure during stress. Stress dose steroids help to prevent hypotension and shock during surgery or severe infections. 4. Prevention of disease flare. In autoimmune patients, the stress of surgery or infection can trigger a disease flare, e.g. systemic lupus erythematosus, vasculitis. Stress dose steroids help control this and prevent worsening of the autoimmune condition. Risks 1. Hyperglycemia Corticosteroids can cause significant increases in blood glucose levels, particularly in diabetic patients, leading to complications like infections, poor wound healing, or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, HHS. 2. Infection risk. Steroids are immunosuppressive and can mask the signs of infection, making it harder to diagnose and manage. Infections, including opportunistic infections, are a significant concern. 3. Psychiatric effects. High doses of steroids can lead to mood swings, anxiety, depression, or even psychosis, especially in patients predisposed to mental health issues. 4. Fluid retention and electrolyte imbalance. Corticosteroids can cause sodium retention, leading to hypertension, fluid retention, and hypokalemia, which can complicate existing cardiovascular or renal conditions. 5. Bone health. Even short-term high-dose steroids can contribute to bone demineralization, increasing the risk of fractures in susceptible patients, e.g. postmenopausal women, individuals with osteoporosis. 6. Peptic ulcers and GI bleeding. Steroids increase gastric acid production and reduce mucosal protection, increasing the risk of peptic ulcers, especially when combined with NSAIDs. Alternatives to stress dose steroids. For some patients, alternatives or adjunctive therapies may be considered depending on the severity of their condition and the underlying disease. Here are possible alternatives and strategies. 1. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. Indication, mild stress or disease flares where adrenal insufficiency is not a concern. Limitations. NSAIDs are not a substitute for steroids in preventing adrenal crisis, but they may help manage inflammation in less severe situations. They are not safe in patients with GI bleeding risks or significant renal impairment. 2. Disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, DMARDs. Indication. In autoimmune diseases, certain DMARDs, e.g. methotrexate, azathioprine, can be used to maintain disease control and minimize the need for stress-dose steroids during stressful events. Limitations. These agents are slower acting and do not provide the immediate relief needed during acute physiological stress. 3. Biologic agents. Indication. Biologic agents targeting specific inflammatory pathways, e.g. TNF inhibitors, IL-6 inhibitors, can be used as part of long-term disease control to reduce the need for steroids. Limitations. Biologics are not suitable for acute stress management and are primarily used for long-term control of autoimmune diseases. 4. Steroid-sparing agents. Example. Medications like myc mycophenolate mofetil or rituximab may be used to reduce reliance on steroids in the long term, potentially reducing the need for stress-dose steroids. Limitations. These are more useful for long-term disease management and not for acute stress responses. 5. Hydration and blood pressure support. Indication. 
in situations where the primary concern is maintaining hemodynamic stability, e.g. surgery, aggressive IV fluids and vasopressors can be used as adjuncts or alternatives to steroid therapy. Limitations. This is not a substitute for the metabolic effects of cortisol, especially in patients at risk for adrenal insufficiency. 6. Fludrocortisone, mineralocorticoid replacement. Indication. In patients with primary adrenal insufficiency or in situations where mineralocorticoid support, blood pressure regulation, is crucial, fludrocortisone can be added. Limitations. It addresses the mineralocorticoid deficiency, but not the glucocorticoid deficiency. So it must be combined with glucocorticoids, like hydrocortisone. 7. Adrenal function testing. Indication. For patients on long-term steroid therapy, but with low risk of adrenal suppression, adrenal function testing, ACTH stimulation test, can determine if they actually require stress dose steroids. If adrenal function is adequate, steroids may not be necessary during stress. Limitations. Not applicable during acute stress or emergency situations where time is critical. Optimizing risk benefit. One, tailoring the dose. Minimize the steroid dose to the lowest effective level and taper as soon as the stress has passed. The shortest duration and lowest effective dose reduce risks like hyperglycemia, infection, and bone loss. Two, adjunctive therapies using gastroprotective agents, PPIs, for ulcer prevention, insulin for hyperglycemia management, and antihypertensives to control blood pressure can mitigate some of the adverse effects of steroids. Three, patient monitoring, careful monitoring of blood sugar, blood pressure, electrolytes, and signs of infection can help detect and manage side effects early, improving the overall risk-benefit ratio. Conclusion. The benefit of stress dose steroids is significant in patients at risk for adrenal insufficiency or experiencing disease flare during stress. The risks include metabolic, cardiovascular, immunosuppressive, and psychiatric complications. While alternatives like DMARDs, biologics, and NSAIDs exist, they are typically used for long-term disease management and do not fully replace the acute effects of steroids. Careful patient assessment and the use of stress-dose steroids in patients with autoimmune diseases